Hey, it's Jahara. Welcome back to my channel. So, I'm going to be talking about um, characters who I feel like traumas are overlooked, whether it's based on the fandom or the other characters in the uh, media or both. Um, so, some of these I do think it's worse, not the trauma's worse or anything, but like the it being overlooked are, is worse. Like, there's some that definitely I think is dealt with a little bit just not as much as i feel like it should have been and or whatever if that makes sense uh i'll get into it now and if you guys agree with me tell me below in the comments if there's some i missed i could always do a part two because i'm sure um these are the only ones i could think of when i made the list so i'm sure that, that there are more that um so comment yours below i will if i know them i will do them um if you want you can put down why you think what their trauma is and why you think they is overlooked um so even if i don't know it i might be able to put it in the part two and just go by what you say um because i may not know all the characters you think is overlooked but i would love to still add it to the list if but you'll have to tell me what the trauma is and um why you think it's overlooked by fandom characters in the media or both and I will add it to the list if you guys do want a part two. Anyways, into the list. So, um, like I said, these are only the ones I could think of at the moment. I'm sure I'll come up with more later. So if I do end up wanting to make a part two, um, like I said, just comment down your uh, characters you think that should be included in a part two. If you guys want a part two. Okay, so at the top of the list, I have Jenny Weasley from Harry Potter. I think... Um, don't get me wrong, um, I, it may not be as overlooked as it seems just because the books are in Harry's POV. So, um, but there's just little hints that I, I just, I don't think it's, like, after it is very rarely talked about again. There's even a time when Jenny goes off with Harry about how, um, she was possessed by Voldemort, kind of, and he was like, oh, I forgot. She's like, lucky you, which is a scene I like because, um, I just feel like nobody talked about it. I mean... Jenny wasn't the biggest part in the early books, uh, except for Chamber of Secrets, obviously, she had a big role in that one, but after, before Chamber of Secrets, obviously, she didn't, and then after Chamber of Secrets, she didn't have a big role again until Order of Phoenix, and then House of Prince, obviously, she becomes Harry's love interest, which gives her a big, um, and then Death of Hallows, with their relationship, of course, she gets a bigger, um, position, a uh, role, that's the word I was looking for, she could end up with a bigger role, because of that. But beforehand, she was very much a minor character. She was just Ron's little sister. We saw her here and there. Um, but up until Order Phoenix, when she becomes part of the DA and shows how powerful she actually is, that's also when you find out about her, how good she is with Quidditch. Um, um, that's when you find out uh, when how good she is with Quidditch. And she obviously is part of the... Uh, group that goes to the ministry at the end so obviously they needed to build up her character a little bit to have her in that big moment at the end um but there's just little moments where it shows that the trauma that she went through when she was 11 still affects her which you can't blame her like i think that's the, i think what jenny goes through in chamber of secrets is even worse than what harry ron and hermione go through in sorcerer's stone when they were 11 um and if I had to pick one of three, I think went through a little bit worse. It was wrong, but that's just me. Um, but anyways, Jenny, um, there's a, just a, some scenes like in Half-Blood Prince when, um, they're talking about, you know, the book and, uh, they're not sure of it, except for Harry, obviously. Jenny has, like, this face about it and, um, Harry reassures her it's not like Riddle's, uh, diary. It's fair. It's not like that. So you can see how much the trauma still affects her. Everything that she went through in Chamber of Secrets. And um, you just never see it brought up. And I mean, it might have been brought up behind the scenes. You just didn't get to see it because Jenny and Harry weren't close. But I still think they could have like mentioned it through Ron. Like have Ron tell Harry this is how Jenny's doing after everything. But it doesn't. And it kind of just leaves you off to believe that everyone just kind of forgot everything that she went through. Um... But, yeah, so I just feel like her, I also didn't hear many fans actually bring up everything she went through. Um, so I just feel like her trauma that she went through is very overlooked. I also have Remus from Harry Potter as well. Um, he went through a lot 
and I just feel like his trauma is also very overlooked, um, maybe even more so than Jenny. Um, obviously, he went through a lot when he was younger, being being turned into a, va a vampire, Ugh. werewolf when he was like three, I think. Um, and he was uh, bitten only because uh, Finier Greyback wanted revenge on Lupin for um, his father. So, and then um, they, he was able to get to Hogwarts despite everything, but he would have to turn. And he was so afraid his friends wouldn't like him. But then, even though I don't necessarily like James or Sirius that much, like, I think Sirius is very overrated. Um, I love the friendship between the three of them, and I love what the two of them did, well, and Peter, but we all know it wasn't Peter's idea because he sucks, but he probably just went along with it to be part of the group, but James and Sirius turning into animators, like, spent years trying to perfect that so that their friend wouldn't have to go through these transformations alone, like, that is top tier friendship right there, so I may not be the biggest James and Sirius fans, but, like, top tier right there, uh, but anyways, moving on, um, and then, with everything, um, and then obviously he, with the anti-werewolf laws, he couldn't, um, find, he couldn't find work, and until, uh, Dumbledore gave him, uh, work, but then of course Snape had to ruin it because Snape sucks, <laughs> and, um, I also think one thing that's definitely overlooked is, Lupin's reaction to losing Sirius, like, everyone's always focused on Harry, don't get me wrong, like, I get it, but at the same time, Lupin looks so heartbroken and just defeated, like, he was trying so hard to push down his own feelings of losing his last friend, that, to help Harry, but, like, if you just watch his face when he's trying to hold back Harry, and then when Harry breaks away from him, he, the way he just looks so defeated, so... It just breaks my heart. I just feel like is, um, I just feel like it's not talked about. Um, and I also feel like his relationship with Harry isn't as. I just feel like it wasn't it isn't as. It just should be as big and important as his relationship with Sirius, but it's never meant to be that way. Um, which I still think that he should have named his son after Lupin instead of uh Sirius, but that's just me. Anyways, that's Sirius. I mean, I, I'm okay with the naming him after series, even though I am not the biggest series fan. I meant Snape. Um, but anyways, so yeah, I just feel like uh, Remus's uh, trauma is uh, uh, very much overlooked as well by characters and fans. Um, I also have Tara McClay on um, Buffy. I'm not sure how much her trauma is overlooked within the fandom. I don't really hear it that often, to be honest. But, um... I honestly think she went through more than Buffy, okay, because, yes, Buffy goes through hell, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, she had a good life, okay, she did, growing up, she was loved with her mom, um, and, um, dad, uh, back then he was a good dad, I'm pretty sure, but, I just feel like she went through so much more because she didn't have that love like she had her mom who she seemed to get along with from the little she spoke about her when Buffy's mom died but other than that her the way her dad um brother and cousin mentally abused her and used her and controlled her and I still think I have a video this very very old video before I really got good with YouTube videos but I do have a video uh it was like back when my channel was still pretty brand new um where, back when I did a lot of those theory videos I used to do, which I do want to bring them back. I did one recently, but, um, anyways, she, I made a theory about how I think that, uh, Tara wasn't just mentally abused, because it's kind of obvious she is, but that she was also physically abused. Um, and, um, one proof I have of that is when, um, her brother was like, if you do not go in the, uh, uh, you do not come with us, I will beat you down, and the way she flinched, and just got all, like, like, she, she I, I don't think that was the first time she was threatened, and, or actually beaten, so, yeah, um, so she's definitely a victim of abuse her entire life, then everything that happened with Glory, he messed with her mind, too, which she's had more than enough of that in her life already, and then Willow, don't wrong, I like Willow, um, but, 
like, it just isn't, like, Tara's the one person that doesn't deserve anything she's been through. I'm not saying the other characters do, like, I don't think Buffy deserved everything she's going through or anything, but Tara's, like, the sweetest, purest character in the world. And to have her own girlfriend mess with her mind after her family did it for 18 years and then a goddess did it. I also don't think this Tara, anyone ever appreciated Tara's act of bravery when, when Glory did that because Tara could have gone away if she just gave up Dawn, but she refused. And yeah, Buffy hugged her when um she went to the hospital, but I... I I don't think anyone ever actually thanked her for that huge sacrifice. I mean, yeah, Tara did kind of technically give Dawn away afterwards, but that wasn't her fault. She wasn't in her right head because she lost her mind to protect Dawn. So that I just don't think that entire act was appreciated as it should be by the characters. Maybe not even by the fans. I don't know. I never hear anyone talk about how amazing she was for doing that. But anyways, I just feel like she... And then, and then after everything, okay... After everything she went through growing up, after everything she went through with Gloria, after everything she went through with Willow, she is back together with Willow. She's happier than she's ever been in her life. The two of them were happy that entire episode only to get shot by a mortal man who wasn't even aiming to shoot her. It was by accident. She deserved better. I stand by that. Like... If there's one character in the out of everything I've ever seen that deserves better, it is her. Okay, moving on because I could rant about how Tara deserves better all day. I also have um, Rachel Berry from uh, Glee. Um, they get really into Kurt's uh, bullying in um, season two. Um, yeah, it was mostly season two because it's when she, he met Blaine and ends up switching to the Warblers. Um, so, I mean, we see it in season one, but th we don't really get as into it until season two. But Rachel was bullied too. I mean, don't get me wrong. Everyone who was ever in the Glee Club got bullied once, at, le at the very least. Um, characters, the characters that joined the Glee Club at the very beginning more so because they were always seen as the outcasts, the nerds, whatever you want to call them. So that would be Rachel, Kurt, Mercedes, Tina and Artie and Tina I feel like got bullied the least out of all of them if you ask me don't get me wrong she gets got slushy like them and stuff but I feel like the others had it worse like them putting Artie in a porta potty unable to get out them constantly dumping Kurt in the trash um actually I think Mercedes also didn't get as bad as the other three if you ask me uh, more so than Tina but not as much as the others if you ask me no, I can't think of anything significant that she actually went through besides getting slushy here and there. If I'm wrong, uh, correct me down in the comments because I might be wrong. It's just, I, I actually started rewatching it not that long ago, but then I stopped because I couldn't watch Disney Plus. Now I have, um, so, because I haven't paid for it, so, um, I had to stop my rewatch. I'm on season three, but from what I remember from rewatching it quite recently, um, I can't think of anything significant she went through. I mean, yeah, she did kind of start trying to starve her body when she was in cheerleading, but um, that was her own insecurity insecurities that started that. There was no one telling her necessarily that she was fat or anything. Um, so yeah, but anyways, at the very beginning, you see Rachel being cyberbullied, and some of the comments were downright messed up, and I feel like that would have been an amazing arc okay like i would have loved to see more of that in season three like she would be happy with finn but then all of a sudden something finn could tell something was wrong with her and then um uh the cyberbullying comes to life or have that as a character arc in season one or season two well season two is too busy with kurt's arc but something like that and it's like um, and it'll also explain, like, why Ra Rachel is the way she is. Like, I love Rachel. I don't think she gets the, deserves the hate she gets. But at the same time, I do understand a little bit of the hate because just the way she is. But at the same time, um, like, doing this would, having this story arc would show why she is the way she is, you know? Because 
all those comments and people telling her she's nothing, she's no good. And it's like singing is the one thing she's good at. So she has to prove she's the best because everyone else makes her feel like she's the worst. I feel like that would have been a great story for Glee, but also for her character. To show her, show everyone why she is the way she is. To show people that she isn't as bad as people think. And I just feel like her trauma from being... Because don't get me wrong, curse bullying was awful. But it wasn't any worse than Rachel cyberbullying that should have been a storyline. Like, cyberbullying is just as bad. Maybe even worse because sometimes because cyberbullying is more psychological. Um, so I just think her trauma is very overlooked and should have been dealt with more. Um, Caroline Forbes on The Vampire Diaries. Uh, her trauma is definitely overlooked because she's been through so much. Um, mostly in the beginning of the series, but I don't care what anyone says. I consider everything that happened with Damon. I mean, first of all, he abused her. No one can deny that. They literally watch him push her off your bed and stuff. And, um, and people's like, oh, he didn't rape her and stuff. Um, it was consensual. And let's say for one minute that they're right, that when they first sleep together, when you first see her with bite marks, it was consensual. I still don't think it was, but who knows? We didn't see the moment before then. Um, but then after he pushes her on the bed and you can see he pulls out his thing, he's about to suck her blood. Like, don't tell me that they didn't, that he didn't have sex with her right then. And don't tell me it was consens consensual. If he did, if it was consensual, I still think he compelled her to say yes when she originally said no. I'm a believer that he raped her. And what makes me mad is that everyone gets on Caroline's case about having an attraction towards Klaus, right? Um, because, oh, he hurt Elena. He killed her aunt. He did this to Elena. Poor Elena. Elena hates him. Everyone else has to hate him. Um, but then Caroline, so Caroline's a bad guy for having this attraction to Klaus that she can't control, right? But then Caroline's also the bad guy for uh for hating that her best friend is with Damon who did all these things to her in season one and then everyone's like why can't you support Elena you know she's your friend she likes him and she can control that and so Caroline just can't win she was the bad guy when she liked Klaus be because he hurt Elena so she can't like him but then she's the bad guy for not wanting Elena with Damon who hurt her but that's okay so it's one and that's something the fandom and characters do so it just irks me because it's double standards it's hypocritical and no caroline was not the bad guy for either one i'm not saying lena was a bad guy for liking damon but to make her the bad guy and willingly be like caroline fought her attraction to klaus because she knew that he hurt people she loved like elena like tyler so yeah, she gave him to him that once. But, like, do you know how long it took of her denying that she had any sort of attraction to him? Because she knew that they hurt people, that he hurt people she loved. And so she fought an attraction she had to him. So that, because she didn't want to hurt them. But then, Elena didn't care everything Damon did to Caroline. And I also think... The writers either just wrote it off as if it never happened, as if Caroline's crazy to not like her with Damon, um, because they wanted Damon to seem like this amazing guy who he's the victim, or they just forgot. And I kind, I, but I honestly think it's a little bit more of the first one because they want to see make Damon to see like seem like this amazing guy all of a sudden, so that people will want him with Elena because they were pushing the whole Elena and Damon thing. But anyways, yeah, I just think, I, it just, it annoys me. I feel like Caroline deserved better. Um, Robbie Keane from um, Cobra Kai. So he goes through a lot, and I think it's also uh, very overlooked. Like, everything his dad put him through, everything his mom put him through, and then he's always seemed like the bad guy. Like, in every scenario. Like, with the school fight. Don't get me wrong, he did go, um... A little too far but at the same time 
no, it's not his fault. First of all, he was trying to stop the fight. Okay, he was. And um, Miguel is the one that attacked him. And then Miguel turns around and talks, taunts him. So no, Miguel's not the victim in that scenario. Because Miguel, Miguel, ugh, it just it annoys me because Miguel taunts him about Sam and about uh, Johnny loving him more. You know, you're going to tell me that he's not going to see red and lose control for a second? Like, I'm not saying Miguel deserved that, but at the same time, it's not Robbie's fault. And maybe Miguel had it coming just a little bit. Then again, Robbie did kind of do something similar later on with the prom fight. Miguel was trying to stop it, then Robbie attacked him, and then he ended up taunting Miguel a little bit by bringing up his father, like, oh, he's just, you know, trying to fix what he screwed up with me. So yeah, that that was a little bit on Robbie, but nobody got too seriously hurt in that one, so that one isn't so bad. Um, but yeah, like, so, um, and then... I like that Robbie and Johnny's in a good place now, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, Johnny has not earned it, okay? He does not deserve Robbie's forgiveness. I like that Robbie forgave him, but it, I felt like it was more for Robbie, because he even said it during his forgiveness, he's like, I'm tired of hating you, which, that's more on Robbie wanting to move on, but I don't think they should be close, not yet. I feel like Johnny still has to earn Robbie, Robbie's being in his life. Because Johnny hasn't earned it, and I just think they rushed them getting close a little bit, and I don't think they should be close yet. I think it should be more of an effort on Johnny's part, because I feel like everything was an effort on Robbie's part. Um, so yeah. I also have um, Amber Smith from Joy Luna. She goes through so much, like she is kind of awful at the beginning, but you kind of understand why, like, um, finding out that about her being adopted, finding out about her god like her godmother who raised her and I is um, technically her guardian, like her adopted mom, but she always calls her godmother because she doesn't let her know the truth, and um, she's never there for her. She always makes Amber think like she has to be perfect, like if she doesn't be number one at school, number one at a uh, skating competition at the world again whatever um number one at singing number one at everything that she's not good enough which is a lot of pressure to put on a 16 year old and so yeah she goes through a lot not to mention when um sharon wants to stop Luna from finding out that she is soul benson she makes amber believe that she is actually soul benson so now she thinks that her parents are dead and that's her godmother slash uh, adopted mother is her aunt bi biologically, which all turns out, which she later on finds out is a lie, finds out that Luna Soul Benson and that she isn't Soul Benson, which is just a lot. I know it sounds complicated, but like Sharon lied so that so Amber thought she was Soul Benson, only to find out that she, uh, Sharon lied and she's not Soul Benson. So she's so confused about who, what her past is, who her family is. She's just confused. Okay. And then she does start to realize everything she's doing is wrong when she fell in love with Simone, who's just so kind and pure and sees the good in her. And he didn't even know she was doing anything vicious behind the scenes. He thought she was trying to actually be a better person when she was actually still being an awful person. But just being close to Simone, having someone that believed in her and loved her and was always, always there for her when literally nobody else would, who would stick up for her, tell her that she's not alone. And not just tell her, but show her made her want to be better but then right after that she was actually willing to change and everything he finds out the truth so he breaks up with her because he's heartbroken which you can't blame him and then she kind of goes off the deep end but he's but even after he has a moment to compose himself and get over the heartbreak he still believes in her and loves her and knows but in season three you still see everything she's going through, like, all her conversation with Sharon, like, there's one scene I love when, um, she's about to leave the house, and, um, Monica, I think she was about to meet Sharon, yeah, she was about to meet Sharon, and, um, Monica, uh, uh stopped her, and she said that she bought her a pair of sunglasses, and Amber's reaction is kind of heartbreaking when you look deeper, because she's like, 
what is this for? She was like, oh, it's just sunglasses I saw. And I thought of you. I wanted to put them. I wanted to buy them for you. And she's like, but why? It's just kind of heartbreaking because it shows that Sharon never just saw something. It was like, hey, that makes me think of it. But I'm going to get it for her today. But Monica did. I absolutely loved Monica at Amber's relationship in season three because she was a mother figure to her, which is something she desperately needed. But yeah. <laughs> um, so I also have Belle French from Once Upon a Time. Um, everyone kind of uses her for research, and then they never really actually add her into things. And one thing that I will never get over, okay, my mom even agrees how messed up this is, and she's not a huge fan of Belle. But she, even she agrees that what happened in this scene is unacceptable, and that Belle did not deserve that. And that's the scene when Rumpel died in season three, okay? Like, I feel... Like, me, I love Neil, okay? He is one of my favorite characters right after Belle. Belle and then Neil's probably second. And I feel like Neil is the only one that had an excuse to not go and make sure Belle's okay because he just lost his father. And he he was obviously devastated at that point, especially since he just got his father back and he was just getting into a good place with his father after all these years. And... So yeah, he has he had every right, but I feel like at least one character could have asked Belle the si very simple words, "Are you okay?" Like, and what kills me is that Regina looked all dazed and sad, and everyone was like, "Regina, what's wrong? Are you okay?" Seriously, seriously, Belle is on the ground, a bubbly mess, tears, crying, sobbing. And nobody so much asked her if she's okay, but Regina looks dazed. Are you okay? It just, it, it makes me bad. Every time I watch that scene, I want to jump into the screen and punch everyone except for Bella and Neil. Oh, it's just messed up, and it's not okay. But yeah, I just feel like, and it's not, that's not the only scene, but that's the main scene that makes me want to punch everyone. But I still think they all kind of use Belle and everything, and it gets on my nerves. Uh, Dean Winchester from Supernatural. Now, I don't think his uh, trauma is overlooked by the fandom because everyone knows how messed up his, tra his uh, trauma is, like his childhood and then everything he goes through as an adult and everything. But the characters, especially Sam, mm -mm. I'm not a huge Sam fan anyways, and I just feel like Sam definitely overlooks Dean's trauma. And Dean... Like, his entire life even said himself that um, he was raised to be a soldier, to protect Sam. That's all he's good for. So his entire life, that's what he did. He grew up thinking that what he wanted, that what he loved was unimportant because all that mattered was Sam. And um, then one thing that sticks in my mind, my mom never even watched Supernatural except for edits. I've made it a few scenes or and or episodes she's seen me watch. Um... And one episode that she does remember seeing is when um, they were, she didn't exactly remember, like, when she brought it up to me, she didn't actually remember, like, what was going on in the episode. She just remembered them kind of seeing memories, and all of Dean's happy memories were of Sam, and all of Sam's happy memories was when he was away from Dean. And, um... And I remember what Dean said, we're like, uh, this is happy memory for you. Uh, you ran away on my watch. You think you think that, uh, and then he's, I don't remember his exact way, but then he's like, and when dad got home, which also kind of makes you wonder if he was a little bit physically abusive to Dean, not just mentally abusive, just by that scene alone, like the way he looked, like he, he looked like there was something more, but yeah. Um, but his job is definitely overlooked by some characters, mostly Sam, and I just think Dean deserved better, especially for his ending. He just deserved better. Um, Arya Montgomery from Pretty Little Liars. Um, she, everyone's always like, her trauma's not as bad as the others, which I don't think you can judge trauma. Like, I don't care if her trauma's worse or anything. No trauma is more important than another. Um, and uh, I just feel like a lot of fans don't realize just how bad some of her trauma is. I mean, like, she still goes through hell. Like, I 
I, I honestly feel like though some of her trauma is more psychological. Because, yeah, she, she may not have as many things where a downright attacked her. I mean, she has the train. She has the one when um, he, like, stapled that plastic around her. Um, those are the only two I can think of the top of my mind. But, oh, there's the one where she was locked in the freezer with Spencer. I know there is a couple more at the very least. I just can't think of them. But, um, like, A, like, telling um her about the tickets or whatever. So, um... So that her parents could find out about um, Ezra, um, telling them the truth about uh, Ella, about Byron, and that Arya knows. Like, I, f I f honestly feel like Arya's trauma is the most psychological. And don't get me wrong, he can be. It was psychological to all of them. Like some of the things, like those whole dolls things. Yeah. But. I feel like a lot of the things I did to her, more so than the others, was psychological, which in a way makes it worse. Um, not to mention all the personal things she went through. I don't remember, they all had personal things as well. But Byron, um, having Arya keep such a secret, like, it was eating her up for over a year. So, yeah. She... She went through a lot more than fans give her credit for. Um, Neil from uh, Once Upon a Time, uh, he went through a lot of hell too because of his father uh, being the dark one and abandoning him, his mother uh, abandoning him and then dying by her father, by his father. And yeah, he went through hell. I just feel like nobody appreciates it, characters or fans, especially fans. Um, I'm a Neil girly and I love him. And I feel like he just went through so much that nobody talks about it. And, um, and I just, like, with him leaving Emma, I, it, I'm not saying I was right. Um, but at the same time, I do get it. Because he was just, he was triggered. When he found out that she was part of the fairy tale land, he was triggered. Because the woman he loved is from the land that his father's from. Which means she could leave him there one day. Which is something he was too afraid to let happen. And he was young. And like. Like yeah. Okay. Can you blame him? Can you blame him? Like I don't care who you are. If you flat out say that you would not do the same thing. I'm not sure if I trust you. Because there are so many people that would do something at least similar and just walk out like that because it was triggering for him. But anyways, moving on. Emily Prentice from uh, Criminal Minds. Um, we had a whole storyline about her relationship with Doyle, but I do think it was a little bit um, overlooked at times. Uh, you know, and I definitely think the characters didn't realize how bad it actually was, like, especially Morgan. Um, and it, you did get to see an episode in season seven when, um, you know, a few girls had to relive their trauma when, um, the rapist came back for them or whatever. And you got to see that hit her, um, uh, everything with Doyle still affected her and stuff. But, uh, I, I just think it wasn't mentioned as often as it should have been. And, um, definitely I feel like her trauma is very much overlooked. Um, and, uh, last on my list is, uh, Mary Stewart from, uh, Rain. I mean, I'm not as into the Rain fandom as, um, I do know a couple people who treat about Rain, mostly Mary and Francis. Um, but someone, um, but I just feel like everything she goes through isn't talked about. Um, like... Everything Catherine puts us through for one, um, her getting raped, her losing Francis, um, she just goes through so much, um, her, everything with her birth, with her new husband in Scotland, with, um, trying to rule Scotland when she had been to Scotland since she was a baby, um, and so on, um, not to mention dying in the end. So yeah, I just feel like she has been through so much and is slightly maybe overlooked, especially by characters, 
in the show, maybe not so much by fans, because I feel like a lot of people can say, like, Mary has been through hell. But I do think characters over are, overlook her trauma and everything she's been through. But yeah, so uh, that's all for my list. Like I said, you can comment down characters you think should be on a part two if you guys want a part two, and I'll try to add them. Um, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. It does help with the uh, YouTube algorithm, and I'll talk to you guys next time.